we must understand this. To build a sensible social fabric, it takes hundreds of years normally in a society. To build a culture where every kind of life, every kind of human being finds reasonably equal opportunity, it takes a long time for a society to structure itself. When aberrations happen in the form of war or whatever else which disturbs the entire fabric of the society, you don't expect everything will fall into place just like that, it doesn't. This is not just true of this society, this is true of every society in the world. Because we must understand this, every transaction we make in the world, if you profit, somebody else loses. If they profit, you lose. This is the nature of every transaction. But to come to a cultural situation, to come to an inner situation where we are willing to play the game, if we lose, we are able to gra gracefully go to the next thing to do. To come to this place, you need a social fabric. Individual human beings can come to this within themselves, but for the larger society to manifest that, it will take its own time. How quickly can we make it happen is the question. How quickly can we put back social structure so that everybody experiences a certain level of comfort and ease and security in a given society? This depends on many things. There is administration, there are social forces, there are individual people everywhere who can do this. I would say if the leadership in the country, when I say leadership I'm not just talking about presidents and prime ministers, in every society there are many tiers of leadership. Any one of you who comes in touch with ten people in a day, you have this choice. You can either impact them positively or negatively, or you can just let it pass by. So, if we start a social movement where everybody strives to impact everybody positively, whoever comes in touch with me today, I make sure that I impact them positively, then there is a sense of ease. When there is no sense of ease, people will do extreme things always. People should come to a certain sense of ease. First thing is, there is an assurance of physical well-being. First thing is protection to life, a certain assurance of food and shelter, then other aspirations of education and social equality and all that stuff. I think the nation is largely working towards that. I think in this, it'll be very good for Uganda. See, we have always thought of nations means their unassailable borders, it is not so. I'm saying, we can be thousands of miles away, but we can form nations together and grow together. This is a time, these are times of collaboration, these are not times of competition. World prospers, industry prospers, business pros prospers, individual human beings prosper only by collaboration, not by working against each other. So I would say it'll be wonderful if culturally where there is certain significance, cer culturally where there is certain coherence, if nations collaborate, I believe East Africa is trying to collaborate with each other. Similarly, a larger collaboration you can do because thousands of years of collaboration has happened between India and Eastern Africa. I think this collaboration should grow where both the people will benefit. Any… any relationship is sustainable only if both the parties are benefiting. We must always set it up this way because if it's an exploitative relationship, it will not last long. Whether it's marketplace or marriage, it must be beneficial to both, otherwise it won't work, isn't it? <laughs> so, setting up such relationships is vital because why I'm saying India and Eastern Africa is, 
This is one thing about India. We have been an occupied nation for over thousand years. This is the only and only nation on the entire face of this earth where after thousand years of occupation, we have still retained our culture. We've still retained our languages. We've still retained our literature. So there is such a very strong fabric of culture which set certain things in place by itself. It's important that one collaborates together so that similar structures can be built here, so that people can have that sense of security and comfort for a long period of time. And if we do the right kind of collaborations and the young people in Uganda, if they stand up to make these things happen, we are also I am willing to invest a certain amount of time towards this. If we take this in a certain way, it is possible. Already I feel the leadership here has done a wonderful job from where it was to where it is today <clears throat> But you must understand, leadership can do only that much. It's the people. It's the people who have to take it up. This is… if this is our nation, we have to make this happen. If this spirit does not come in us, if only spirits from the bottle are going into us, <laughs> the spirit should rise from within us, it should not be going into us, isn't it? <laughs> there is a spirit here, this must rise, not this kind of spirit going in. <laughs> that gets you up for some time and then gets you down. This if it gets up, it's always on. So, it's my wish and my blessing that better times will come. Better times must come, but we should not wait for better times to come. We must make it happen. Let's make it happen. Thank you very much.